Good morning. I hope that you guys are doing well today. As you can see, my situation has changed significantly. We were planning on camping today and last night, but it turned out that uh, we had booked our camping reservation for the wrong time. So rather than go home with our tail between our legs, so to speak, we uh, uh, found a place to stay in St. John. Thankfully, prices are really decent right now to stay in hotels and everything's very clean here so we're just having a family fun time here in St. John uh, which is nice and then we're heading home so uh, that was our fun adventure I hope you've had some adventures this week as well now let's see today another adventure for us as we start our morning is that we're going to be doing Psalm 121 and Psalm 121 is one of my and I would say my wife's all-time favorite psalms as well. This is a psalm that we have come back to over and over again in our own lives and in our spiritual journey. And um, I think it's just this beautiful psalm. I know that I'm, I'm sure I've preached on it at least once. And uh, so I'm going to invite you to read it with me. And then we'll talk about it together a little bit. And then afterwards, I'm going to invite you, after we're done praying, to go back and read it again. I just let the words seep in. It's a really short psalm, too. So there's this real sense with this psalm that as we read it together, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's a psalm that you can take with you. It's an easy bite to chew on. So let's read this together. Psalm 121, a song of ascents. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is at your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon at night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Isn't it beautiful? So let's talk about this psalm. There's some neat things going on in it, but at the same time, it's one of those psalms that you really have to put your head kind of into the Hebrew frame of mind to get some of the details. So Psalm 121 is a psalm of ascent. It's a song of ascent. It's one of the songs that they would sing as they walked up to Jerusalem's pilgrims journeying to the holy city. Now, like the last song of ascent, it's not a song that necessarily comes across as being really joyful. It's a song that is hopeful. It's a psalm that is fearful. It is a psalm that meets us in our fear and puts our hope in the right place. So how does it do that? First off, it does that by saying, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Now, at the first thought, that sounds like I lift my eyes to the hills and, you know, I lift my, like I lift my eyes to the heavens. But that's actually the opposite of what's happening. So the, the psalmist, whoever's writing this, there's this, he's walking through a valley. And he lifts his eyes up to the hills. Now, the hills were in ancient Israel where pagan worshipers would worship their idols. That's where they would set up their uh, ashtoreth poles. And that's where they would do their sacrifices were in the high places. And so you'll notice in the book of Kings over and over again, it'll reference whether or not a king went through and cleared out the high places, whether he tore down those idols there. So the psalmist says, I go to this, I, I'm out walking and I see things that fill me with fear and things that fill me with that, uh, you know, that are problematic and even terrifying, evil spirits, evil um, principalities that are at war with our God. And he says, so where does my help come from? In the midst of this and he turns it around right away and he says but my lord my help comes from the maker of heaven and earth so my help comes from the one who even made those hills he's greater far than the the idols on those hills and then he turns around and he says and this is my relationship with him and this can be your relationship with him he does not let your foot slip he who watches over you will not slumber he who watches over israel will neither slumber nor sleep and there's a lot going on here, right? We have just this fact that God is omnipotent and omnipresent, that he's everywhere and he has the power to do everything. So this is who he is. He is the God that you want on your side. 
But there's also the sense going on here that whether this is before or after this period, you'll remember the story of Elijah, how Elijah's standing on Mount Carmel fighting with the prophets of Baal, and he's making fun of them when their God won't uh, light the altar. And what does he say to him? He says, oh, your God must be asleep. And so the reference that we get here is just that. He's saying, look, this God, the God of Israel, your God, he doesn't slumber, he doesn't sleep, he calls you his own. And then he goes on in verse 5 to say he watches over you. His eyes are for you even when your eyes aren't for him. He is your shade at your right hand. And this is a reference to Exodus where they're coming through the desert and he was a pillar of smoke by day, like a great cloud of smoke. He's a shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. Now, once again, sun and moon. Sun, we think sunburn. Moon, we go, well, what's scary about the moon? But remember, these are also religious deities in the ancient world. And so this discussion about uh, sun and moon is re referencing back again to who's stronger, the principalities and powers of that age or Yahweh. And the psalmist says Yahweh is powerful and Yahweh is the one who is watching you. So and notice as well, finally he comes to verse 7 and he says, This is the promise I have for you. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore so this is a calm for the pilgrim to say a call for the pilgrim to say you know what although i walk through dangerous places my hope is in the lord and more than that my hope is in a god who watches over me and that's the joy that we have when we come to this psalm as well that's why this is a beautiful psalm for the christian to memorize for the Christian to really live in and chew on because no matter what scary things we face, the promise is still there. Here is a God who watches over us. There is no principality nor power, nor thing present, nor thing to come. Nothing can separate us from his love. And so this is our assurance and our delight. So that being the case, I hope that that's something for you. Let's spend a few minutes praying here uh, before we uh, uh, end our time. Father, we praise you and we thank you for your love. We thank you that you are present with us and we thank you for your word that is a light um, to, uh, and a lamp. I always get that verse messed up. But Father, it's true. You are the one who guides us. And when we look to you, the moon and the sun, as bright as they are, fall far short of the brilliance of your glory. And we praise you for that, Father. We pray, Lord, that as we go out in today, whatever it may bring, um, Lord, when we are faced with fear, may we turn our eyes towards you. May we look to you, trusting you, that you're the one who seals the deal when we need help. Lord, there are many things in this world that shake us. Financial ruin, um, relational challenges, our healths. Um, the loved ones that we know and love who are facing illnesses and tragedy. And in the face of all of these things, we have no place better to turn than to you. So help us to turn to you. Help us to declare that you are the one we can put our trust in. Help us to have this present understanding, as Paul did and as the psalmist did, that you are the one watching over us, the one guiding our steps. And may we walk with confidence because we know that you are near. May we walk with humility and in worship because we know that you watch over us. And Lord, we may pray that we would walk with hearts that imitate your, our precious Savior, uh, giving all we can to love those that are hurting, caring for those that we know who need a helping hand, serving sacrificially as he serves us, sacrificially we pray father for our loved ones those that are in the hospital those who are recovering from being in the hospital we pray for those who are battling with cancer be your mercy and your may your mercy and your strength be with them we pray as well father for our church as we move forward as we plan for the fall it's a strange and uh, difficult time and we pray for wisdom for our leaders as we take steps to both protect the people in the congregation and to uh, move forward as a church serving our community and we pray just that 
that we would be a church that is excited to serve our community and love them to the best of our ability. Show us ways that we can do that with the, uh, the assets that we have, with the people that you've given us to serve. And Father, we pray for the children and the teachers as everybody gets ready to go back to school. Bless them and protect them. Give them wisdom and grace. And we pray for our leaders and for the leaders of the world, around the world. Give them a wisdom that comes from on high. That they may serve humbly and bring mercy and justice and healing to a broken world. For your glory, Father. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope that you have a blessed and a beautiful day. Now I have to take the boys to the pool. Bye-bye.